Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel. Today I am going to talk about things that I don't like about Morocco. The last video I talked about things that I love about Morocco, the top five things. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the five things that I don't like about Morocco, which actually took me some time to figure out. And excuse my shirt, it's Christmas time <laughs> and I love the holidays. You'll actually notice one video I am wearing my Beetlejuice shirt that was during Halloween. <laughs> so um, I just want to point out that I am not trying to be offensive to anyone. This is just my opinion as an American that goes over to Morocco. Some of the things you might notice that you have to get used to and, you know, um, let your mind kind of disregard some things because our culture is definitely different than their culture and of course there's things i don't like about my own country so it's not not meant to be offensive in any way so one of the things that is going on well first make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss our videos and you get notifications on them but one of the things that i this isn't actually on the list but it is something that i do notice and it's currently going on where the government likes to announce things very sudden. That's not something we do here. Everything's kind of planned out, like you have this amount of time to figure things out. But over in Morocco, they kind of just announce things very sudden and it frustrates a lot of people from everywhere, I think. But this is just something that I've noticed their government has done um, a few different times and right now you can't get in or out of Morocco because of that <laughs> and a lot of people actually flew all the way there and couldn't get in because they didn't have a COVID vaccine that actually just happened which is keeping me from going there unfortunately but I I did notice that, but that wasn't part of the list. It's just currently going on with uh, Morocco at the moment, which is kind of something I guess I don't like is that the government kind of announces things too suddenly. I understand that things happen, but gotta give people time. So my top five things, however, is also the time it takes for things to happen in Morocco. So in, in the United States, we're very, fast pace and I'm from a big city so everything gets done pretty quickly we we get things done in a timely manner over in Morocco that is not something that happens <laughs> something that might take two hours to happen will take at least two weeks I've noticed that uh, especially when we got married that process took three weeks which is kind of ridiculous and um I notice a lot of the things that my husband says, like certain things that need to be done, it's taking a very long time. And I'm like, why isn't that done in a few hours? That's, <laughs> you know, that's just something I'm used to. That's something we're used to as Americans is everything's fast paced. So you have to get used to living that lifestyle or being in the part of that lifestyle. Um, if you're with a Moroccan, because everything is very slow over there. Um, slow in a way that it's done on their time and there's no consideration for your time. <laughs> so I actually did kind of benefit from that because I did learn to slow my roll over there, which was nice because I actually was able to take a break. You know, you had to learn to stop and gradually do things versus, you know, bulldozing through life as we do here in America. So. I did benefit a little bit from that being over there. So number two is the language barrier. So of course, when you go to another country, you should automatically learn the language that is over there. But when before I went, I was learning like standard Arabic and I realized that Morocco has its own set of languages <laughs> depending on where you're at. 
So first of all, they speak French in Casablanca, French in um, Derija, Arabic. So I went over there completely clueless that they even spoke French. So that's something you want to learn for sure. It's everywhere, everybody. And especially being a Black American, when you go over there, most of the, um, you know, darker tone um, Moroccan people, they speak French and they will talk to you in French. I noticed that a lot. As soon as I was in the airport, another gentleman, he spoke French. He was Black to me, my skin tone. And he was immediately talking to me in French like I was supposed to understand. And I was like, I speak English. And he's like, oh, okay. So he had to get out his phone and translate, stuff like that. So you want to learn French. And the more north you go, you want to know French. Now, there's some people who do speak English in um, Casablanca, but the more north you go, there's not going to be anybody that speaks English. I definitely was the maybe one of five people there, I felt like. But I needed to know French um, up north, Spanish, because they do start speaking Spanish in some areas. Then there's Berber and other languages. So I just feel like there's a lot of different languages and I got confused on which one I was supposed to learn. So it's not like a, a big deal. I can learn the languages, but there's so many different ones there that you can't really pinpoint which language you're supposed to learn. So that was kind of, it's still kind of like, well, I don't know what language I'm supposed to learn, but French is a very good one you want to learn. <laughs> so that is number two. Number three is the driving. <laughs> I refuse to drive over there. I will keep that to Sofian. But in the taxis and things like that, I had a lot of anxiety because the driving is crazy over there. I feel like there's no set rules <laughs> on the driving. But the driving is crazy in America, but there's like, you know, rules we follow, certain things like that. So over there, it's kind of like people just drive and do whatever they want. There's no real... <laughs> <laughs> there's no real structure. There's lights and stuff like that, but I couldn't drive over there at all. I know it would cause me way too much anxiety or I would crash. And <laughs> so that was one of the things I noticed is the driving there is a little hectic. Number four is, this is one thing that actually did bother me a lot. And I'm not an environmentalist or anything like that, but... <laughs> Here in America, we get fined for this kind of thing, even up to going to jail, and that is the trash. So when I was there, I noticed like we, when we were in the mountains or in Casablanca, there's a lot of trash everywhere. And I know there is people that do this job and they clean up the trash, but to me, it's a cultural thing. I will say that because over there, they may not have something enforced. It's not called um, littering where we get fined for that and, you know, can get a bad fine or go to jail or something like that. So over there, there's a carelessness for just throwing your trash anywhere. And I noticed that it, there was places, very beautiful places, and very beautiful waterfalls that, um, this is my son, beautiful, beautiful waterfalls and things like that, that had a lot of trash at the end of it. And I felt, I don't know, I just felt some kind of way about that, but it's not something that I think they're used, they're not used to having rules against that. So that's something that, sorry, that's something that you have to kind of ignore because that's just something they're not used to over there. That's something we're used to because we will get fined for it. <laughs> you, nobody wants to pay a $500 ticket for throwing your trash out the window. So over there, it's just not a thing. So that's something you'll have to get used to. And number one is, this one really sucked for me because in the Western culture, it's not uncommon to kiss or to hug or to hold hands in public. So PDA is absolutely forbidden over there. Nobody does it unless you're American or something, then you notice it. But 
um, my husband is Muslim and I'm headed that route also. So I, well, I have, <laughs> I adapted to the culture and I understand that it's something that is not to be done, but it was very hard for me not wanting to kiss him and hold his hand and rub on his back. You know, all the public display of affections that I wanted to do, kiss in the taxi, um, rub my hands in his hair, you know, all the things that you would normally do and not think twice about it here in America. You really have to be cautious about that over there. And that was hard for me because we couldn't be very affectionate out of outside of the house. And there, you know, it just, it was, it wasn't normal. So I had to get used to that. And like in the mall, I wanted to hold his hand walking around the mall. And I just, I knew that was something we couldn't do. So that was pretty much the one thing I really didn't like is that I just wanted to kiss him everywhere and <laughs> I couldn't do that. And so it wasn't something that I couldn't overcome, obviously. I love my husband. We love each other. But, you know, I can handle myself in that way. It's just something that's very different from being here in America and being over there. Like when he comes here, I've even had this conversation with him. How are you going to feel coming here and being able to kiss me in the park? You know, if I come in for a kiss, he's probably going to back away <laughs> because that's really something that he's not used to or that's a cultural difference. So. Those are some of the things that I didn't like about Morocco or I happen to not like. Again, not to be offensive in any way, I love Morocco. There's, it's just a cultural difference that I'm noticing and nothing that I can't get used to for sure. And if you like this video, make sure you comment below. And you know, if you have any other topics that you would like to hear from us, we would love to talk to you guys. He's not currently with me yet, but we're on our way. And, you know, there's so many things going on right now because of COVID. So we're separated for the time being. But he will be with me soon, inshallah. So I hope you guys have a good day. And if you want more topics, just comment below on what you would like us to talk about. Hope you have a good day.